the actress Sophie Tucker is known to have said, I've been poor and I've been rich. Rich is better. Most Americans are able to remain between being rich and being poor. Many, however, have taken advantage of the opportunities to become extremely wealthy, both through honorable means and not so honorable ones, often at the expense of pushing others into poverty. This country's recent protests highlight the dissatisfaction with the divide between the very rich and the rest of society. Most other countries' socialist efforts to even out the wealth have failed. In some, there has become no wealth to share. Fortunately, there are much better educated economists and leaders than I to make the political decisions needed to heal the present situation. There are, however, certain God-inspired principles from which such decisions should be made and on which we Christians should rely. God has expressed that our wealth does not affect his love for us. He tells us that we are actually blessed when we identify with the poor. He invites us to come to him empty-handed. I was reminded of this in reviewing the rule of life developed by our Christ the Bridegroom Monastery. In their acceptance of poverty as a valued characteristic of their life, they referred to true wealth as our relationship with God and with all else as his creation. The document quotes the Old Testament book of Song of Songs, I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. With this relationship in mind, our concern for the poor is heightened. The great patron of our Sisters of St. Basil stated, The bread which you do not use is the bread of the hungry. The garment hanging in your wardrobe is the garment of him who is naked. The shoes that you do not wear are the shoes of the one who is barefoot. The money that you keep locked away is the money of the poor. The acts of charity that you do not perform are so many injustices that you commit. St. Basil the Great The solution to the world's economic crisis cannot be found without an acknowledgement of and commitment to our relationship with God. At Thanksgiving, we Americans give thanks for our blessings primarily by prayer and by joining together for a special meal. Let us not just give thanks for what we have. Let us thank God for what we have, especially our relationship with him, and share that wealth with others.